Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In this video, I'm going to try and take you through the pricing tool. Now, the, client, the pricing tool built into Client Engager can be extremely complex because it's got so much functionality, but it can be extremely simple as well. So what I'm going to try and do is start off with a really simple example, then give you a bit more of an escalated example, which is a bit more difficult, but a bit more interesting with the, what could be done with it and the accuracy that you can price your clients to with it. And then I'm going to try and give you a really extreme example of how complex it can become. So let's have a look in Client Engager and see how this all works. Okay, so we're in Client Engager. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to price for something really simply, where you've just got one fixed price for that service, full stop. You don't charge any more, you don't charge any less. Every client pays the same thing for that client service. So first of all, we're gonna to go to the settings. This is where you're gonna find everything you need. In the settings, we're gonna find our services. The service I'm gonna to use today for this example of the real simple option is the CSO1 or confirmation statement. So first of all, I'm gonna go into this service. And I'm gonna go in and set a default base price. I'm gonna set that price as one. So the reason I've set this price as one is because that's gonna be my multiplier. And I'm gonna explain that in a bit more detail in a second. So I'm just gonna save this. I'm gonna go into my custom fields and I'm going to turn on a set up a new custom field, a whole new section as well. So I'm going to create a new section. So I'm going to save that. Then what I'm going to do is add a new field. I'm going to ask a question. Do you require a confirmation statement? So this is a really easy example, okay? And I'm going to turn this down, uh, change this to a, a pricing factor included. And I'm going to go to a drop down menu here. I'm going to have a simple drop down menu. Yes. No. I'm going to set no as zero, and I'm going to say yes is my price. So. We've put one in our settings for our service, so that's a multiplier of one. So I'm gonna say it costs 72 pounds a year for us to do your confirmation statement. So I'm charging, so I'm charging six pounds a month for the privilege of doing a confirmation statement. So in this case, if, if a client tells me they want a confirmation statement, I'm gonna select, I'm gonna select yes, and that'll create a value of six pounds times by the multiplier in the service section of the base fee, which is one. I'm then going to go to a client to show you an example of this. I'm going to go to services and pricing. Okay, so I've now say, created a section called confirmation statement and I've created a question of do I require a confirmation statement? I've set six pounds if yes, I've set zero as no. Then I'm going to go back to my services. I'm going to find my CSO1 service, here we go. And in the pricing factors, I'm going to go, I've got base fee of one pound. And then I'm going to multiply that by the question, do you require a confirmation statement? Yes. Now, if I go to a client, I'll go to Client Engager, for example. If I now go to their service and pricing and scroll down to the CSO1 and turn that on, that is now asking me the question of, do I require a, state, a confirmation statement? I'm gonna turn around and say yes, and it's gonna tell me it's 72 pounds annually. I'm gonna say, actually, I want to charge this monthly. So it's gonna drop it to six pounds, and I'm gonna move it over there. And remember, you can always check the explanation. So you, you click on explain, and it says, right, your base fee was one. You've times that by six, which is your answer. And if I go no, that times by zero gives you zero. I'm going to go yes, I'm going to put that price over there, and I'm going to save. So that's really quick and simple, that's a fee, there's no complication there. I know I charge £72 a year for a confirmation statement, that's £6 a month. So if a client wants to say yes to a confirmation statement, I need to put £6 into the invoice, 
and that's what I've done there. Okay, so that's how we would price for a fixed price service. So for example, a tax return where it's regardless of anything, it's £120 a year, then that's what you would do in that example. Just remember, when you're entering pricing into the custom fields, that it's assuming it's a monthly fee. So if you're charging £120 for a tax return, you need to put your monthly price in of £10, it will then multiply that to then work out what a quarterly and an annual fee is. But just remember, always put in a monthly fee to the pricing tool. So the next one to look at is gonna be a more, a slightly more complicated one, where there's a bit more of an, a mathematical equation behind it. And for this example, I'm gonna look at inputting sales invoices. So let's have a look in Client Engager how I'd do that. Okay, so first of all, I need to start a new service called Sales Invoicing. So I'm gonna do that by clicking onto my services, creating a new service, it's enabled. Processing sales invoices. And I'm gonna set the default fee here of three pounds. So what I'm saying here is I'm gonna charge three pounds per sales invoice that I process. And for scheduler services, ultimately it's a bookkeeping service. So type in bookkeeping, I'm gonna set that as my scheduler services. And I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna put test in there so I can save it. Okay, then I'm gonna to go to my custom forms fields. I'm going to go to the bookkeeping information section and add it here. And I'm going to add process and sales invoices. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select a drop down box option. And I'm going to basically allocate prices here. I'm going to put uh, brackets here. If I add, if I do between one and 10, I want the three pounds per invoice times by 10. And that gives me a bit of flexibility. So one month they might give me eight, another month they might give me 10, another month they might give me five, but it doesn't matter because I've got a bracket of one to 10 and I charge that same fee for regardless of how many invoices I do, providing they sit within that bracket of invoicing numbers. The other option would be, if you know it's a fixed amount every month, you could put in a whole number and just leave that blank and save that. And what you would then do is when you do the pricing, you just enter the fixed number you know it is every month. But in this case, we're gonna assume there's some flexibility here. So we want to do some brackets. So first one will be one to 10. And I'm gonna charge 10 times three because I've, I've got to up to 10 documents. 11 to 20, 20. 21 to 30. 30, 31 to 40, 40. Right, you get the idea. So, I'm also gonna add one called nil and put naught in there. I'm gonna set that as my default. So I'm gonna press save there. Then I'm gonna go back to my uh, settings for my services and I'm going to go and find this new service processing sales invoices and I'm going to come in here and do the wizard so I've said I'm charging three pounds per document I'm going to multiply that by where's my bookkeeping so I've said it's three pounds per document and I'm going to multiply that three pounds by the number that is appropriate to the bracket of sales invoices I'm doing. So I'll save that. So let's go and have a look at how that works. We'll go to our clients again. we we'll go to Client Engager. I'm gonna to go to my services. I'm gonna go down to the bottom where that new service is gonna be. I'm gonna turn that on. So it's a monthly fee, we've got that set. And I'm gonna say, well actually there's up to 10 invoices a month I'm gonna do. If I was gonna do up to 20, it should go to 60, 30 should take it to 90, 40 should take it to 120. Brilliant, it does, so I'll then just click on that. 
So on an annual basis, they're paying me £1,400 for processing their sales invoices, up to 40 a month. And what will also happen is because we've said it's up to 40 or whatever bracket we've put in here, if you then decide to put pricing factors in your letter of engagement and your proposal, then that will show up that this is the limit. We will process between 31 and 40 documents for you and that's the limit. If you go over that, we will charge you more. We will review our price. And if you want to see more about how you do, how you outline that in your documents for your letter of engagement or proposal, have a look at the deep dive letter of engagement template video I did, and that will help you understand a bit more of that context. Okay, so that's a bit more a, a complex one. So we've gone through fixed pricing of a fixed flatline price, no matter what happens, to one that is scalable depending on the number of documents or the number of some transactions, whatever it's going to be. And that is now set, so I've got a base fee of three pounds there and I'm tying it by the number of documents in the bracket I'm gonna do. What about something a bit more complex? Let's have a look at taking something that is a variable based on number of transactions and then adding various multiplication factors to it. So this is the, real, this is the more complex bit that it gets really complicated with, but let's have a go and see what we can find out. So we're gonna go back to our services and have a look at annual accounts this time. So if I go in here, you'll notice this is the one that's already set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete all of this and show you it from the beginning. So what I'm saying is my base fee here is 40 pounds a month. I'm gonna save that. Then I'm gonna to go to my custom fields. I'm looking at my key pricing indicators here. And I've got my first section of annual accounts information. So the first question I'm asking is, what's my turnaround time? If a client wants me to turn around a set of documents in, a, in three months, that's fine. I'm going to times my £40 by one. If a client wants me to turn it around in even more time, I'm going to start increasing that multiplying factor. So that's what I've done here. So it's 1.2 times more expensive, 20% more expensive for someone to get their accounts done in two months than it is in three because that it's them that's going to be dictating to us they want it done that quickly, so they should be paying for that privilege. And remember, this is just an example of how we can multiply and what type of factors we might take into consideration when we're doing our pricing. It's entirely up to you what you do and don't include. We've gone all the way up to 2.5 times more expensive if you want it done within seven days of financial year end. Other key factors that we've taken into account here are things like annual revenue. So we've said it's 40 pounds per month. But actually what I've done here is anyone that's under 100k turnover starts getting it slightly cheaper because they've got a smaller turnover. And anyone that's got over £100,000 a month gets it more expensive because they've got more work entailed with that higher turnover potentially. But again, this is just as a guideline. So that's how we put in our different factors. Now, each of those questions has then got a multiplying factor for us to consider. So then what we would do, like we've done every other time, is we go to our services, we go to annual accounts, and I'm going to start making the equation for this, because this one's a, this equation's a bit more detailed than the last two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, it's 40 pounds. I'm going to times that by the annual revenue of the client. Then I'm going to times that answer by the client type. So maybe you love working with construction industries, you hate e-commerce, but you'll do it, but you want to charge more because you don't enjoy it as much. Then we're gonna multiply that answer by the records location. Maybe you love zero, maybe you hate Sage, maybe you hate QuickBooks. Price it appropriately to what you enjoy working with. So if someone's in zero and you love zero, you'll make that multiplying factor one. But if someone's in Sage, you might increase that multiplying factor because you know it's more hassle, more work, because you're not as comfortable with that situation. Then you take that and you can multiply it by, I don't know, let's go with um, record quality. So is, is their record quality good, excellent, poor? Let's make that a factor in this multiplication. Then I'm actually going to add uh, sorry, subtract an amount from this one. I'm going to say, if they've left us a Google review, I want to subtract an amount from the fee. So let's save that and let's go have a quick look 
at what that does for us. So we're going to go back into our Client Engager demo. We're going to go back to our servicing. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these questions that are all built in here, look. So, records location. We're going to say they're on QuickBooks. Google review. They left us a Google review, yes. Then we're looking at our annual revenue, where we're going to say it's 100k for the sake of easiness. And we're going to say the record quality is excellent. And as you can see, that price has changed quite considerably. So let's have a look at what's going on there. So we've got 40 times by one, because that's the break-even point for our that we've used for our annual revenue of 100k and up goes up in price from 40 pounds a month under 100k goes down in price so if I change this quickly so if I say actually our turnover is only 50k it's timesing it by 0.6 the client types are limited company so that's fine records location is QuickBooks so that's multiplied to 1 if it was on 0 the system set up to change it charge 1.1 if it's on Sage it's two, times 2 Record quality, so they're getting a discount here because it's 0.8, because it's excellent quality work. If it was poor, the fee goes to 1.1. If it was terrible, it goes to 1.2. Then it says minus five. So basically what I've said here is regardless of what's going on with the quality of records and stuff, if a client leaves me a review on Google, I'll give them a five pounds a month discount on their annual accounts fee. And that's what's happened here. So that's how we do a bit more of a complicated one with multiple varying factors. So like, I've seen people using AML risk as a factor that takes into account on their pricing. I've seen people that are just doing 40 pounds a month, every month for 12 months a year, and that is their annual accounts fee. It's entirely up to you how you price. But hopefully with those three examples today, you'll be able to take a different approach to each pricing category of each service and make it work for you. So hopefully, if you've been using something like Go Proposal, Practice Ignition, or you've got your own spreadsheet, for example, you'll be able to take those workings and apply those into Client Engager by creating your own services and custom fields to work out the equations that you've already been using historically. If you've only ever been charging by the hour but you want to go into fixed pricing, I suggest working it out on a spreadsheet or a bit of paper before you start playing with it in Client Engager just so you can do your brainstorming, you can think, right, if I do this by this by that, what's the impact? You know, and does that client model work with my clients? Hopefully this has been a useful video for you. If you've got any questions about pricing, of course, reach out to us. I look forward to talking to you all again in the next video very soon.